it's here. My Stanley Times Clockwork Orange mashup cup. Combining the dystopic horror of Stanley Kubrick's unique vision of modern life with the drinkability of the Quencher 2.0 with Flow State. I cannot believe it. It is part of the Stanley Times Stanley Kubrick series. That's not out yet, but I do have a real one. And if you haven't noticed, these water bottles have taken over the world. They can at Target, reminiscent of Black Friday. We spent the night at Target for the new Stanley Starbucks cup. They get their hands on the limited edition Valentine's Day Stanley cup. This line, guys, are, are we okay? No. But what is actually going on here? I've been researching the Stanley Cup, and I have found the answers that I think nobody else is really talking about. It took me to Post Malone, the Colonel himself, and Gilded Age economists, but most importantly, it shows us the outcome of a new business experiment that is going on right in front of our eyes. I want what? I want my own army. I want my own planet. Here is William Stanley's patent for a heat-insulated receptacle a genuinely innovative product due to its vacuum-sealed inner chamber. William Stanley's other inventions were stuff like this, induction coils. But the water bottle, it took off. It became a staple of water bottles, famous primarily for durability. No one can break it. The hit bottles that you're seeing today are different versions of the quencher, which CNBC says has more than 10x revenue in just four years. It's a variety like this one, particularly the Galentine's version that you've seen taking down Target shelves. Have you ever seen these Stanley Cups? Galentine's Day collection is already sold out. Prices vary a lot, but I found Stanley's for resale for 240 bucks. Let's go over here and I will tell you the functional stuff about it. You can take out the straw, make it like a normal water bottle. One of the important details is it's made of a solid material which allows it to hold liquid. I think that's like, that's crucial. Um, that's all I've got for you, I don't know. Okay, so why does this happen? I'll get you up to speed on the kind of official story before I tell you the real reason this has happened, the one that relates to like a big business social experiment. This woman's car caught fire, and incredibly, a cup inside not only survived, but kept her drink cold. Reason one, viral moments. A woman's car blew up. It was a fire yesterday. It still has ice in it. Stanley Marketing head Terrence Riley replaced it. Well, we're going to send you some Stanleys. But there's one more thing. We've never done this before, and we'll probably never do it again. But we'd love to replace your vehicle. That doesn't blow my mind, but... Remember Terrence Riley, he will come up later. Reason number two, an influencer blog named The Buy Guide loves Stanley's. Stanley bought into the phenomenon and boom, they rode off into the sunset together. I'm sure The Buy Guide is great and was very influential, but influencers are not that influential. Except for me, please give me $30 million to sell almost anything and I will accept. Reason number three, this is the point in the media stories where they're kind of like, Social media, yada, yada, yada. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Do you buy that any of these things generated $600 million in revenue? Here's what I buy. Thorsten Veblen is a philosopher turned economist at the end of the Gilded Age. His big book was The Theory of the Leisure Class. A new class had risen up thanks to industrialization. One that wasn't royalty, but also not really just workers, a leisure class. You know, the doctors, the factory owners, the accountants. They had new modes of behavior, including buying stuff. Veblen is most notable for coining the phrase conspicuous consumption. I love this one example he's got. It seems really fitting. He says, okay, imagine two similar spoons. A wrought silver spoon of a commercial value of some 10 to $20 is not ordinarily more serviceable, in the first sense of the word, than a machine-made spoon of the same material. He's saying a crappy spoon works just as well as a fancy one, but the hand-wrought spoon gratifies our taste, our sense of the beautiful. Spoons, water bottles, pretty much the same thing is going on here. But I'm actually less interested in Veblen's ideas than in the timing of them. That's partly because he was also into weird phrenology stuff, you know, 1800s, but mainly because I think it's crazy that the idea of conspicuous consumption 
wasn't invented until 1899. The leisure class came about because of the Industrial Revolution. Royalty had been showing off for a very long time. That was nothing new. And you long had crazes like the Dutch tulip craze, in which people went nuts for tulip bulbs. But that was primarily a speculative investment, not a conspicuous consumption. It was closer to an NFT. And along with conspicuous consumption, there's one other big piece that brings us to what we have today. Good chicken. This is Colonel Harlan Sanders, the Colonel of Kentucky Fried Chicken. And these are the 2020 Crocs based off his fried chicken. While sipping on this story, I spent some time in the archives of Footwear News, and it tells a pretty incredible story about Crocs. In 2014, Crocs has had it tough. Just a few years later, it was collaboration after collaboration. The marketing of Crocs from 2013 to 2020 was led by an executive named Terrence Riley. Do you remember him from earlier? Hey, Danielle. My name is Terrence Riley. I'm the president of Stanley. He had come from foot action and seen firsthand the rise of sneaker drop culture. That's where limited edition sneakers are released to ardent fans and then quickly taken off the market. Veblen would have been fascinated by it, but manufacturing in media at the time made artificial scarcity harder to generate than it is today. Often these drops were tracked online or in store, removing the need for big advertising campaigns. Riley took that drop collaborative culture to Crocs, which kind of makes sense because they're shoes, but it was also a bit of a leap because they're Crocs. He signed stars like Post Malone, but also many, many others. Crocs, once maligned, started showing up on sneaker tracking sites like StockX. Honestly, I felt a little pretentious writing Thorsten Veblen into this, but you need some pretty advanced theory to explain Balenciaga Crocs. In hindsight, this was stage one of his great experiment. Could he take sneaker culture and make it work for Crocs? Stage two? Could he take Crocs culture and make it work for water bottles? Stanley started collaborating with influencers just like Crocs did with Post Malone, albeit influencers with different styles. We teamed up with Stanley again, y'all. We got the Stanley quencher right here. This one is called Country Gold. Woo! Come on now. Check it out, y'all. And on the bottom, LW right there. I'm so excited. Country gold. They harnessed artificial scarcity through super limited drops. That is what's driving the madness in Target. It doesn't hurt that Stanley is owned by a company that specializes in logistics. And in 2024, you don't need a Nike app or a StockX account to stay up on new drops if you have algorithmically tuned TikTok and Instagram fees. Though Stanley is now on StockX, if you were worried. This is the latest Stanley collab, a two-for-one special. It's the Stanley Stanley Tucci. Okay, I made that up, but Tucci, you should give them a call. Okay, so why tell this story at all? I mean, I, I found it funny, of course, I'm human, but I also started to get incensed the more that I learned that this was being sold as a generic influencer story, when in reality, it is this crazy experiment of drop culture that worked. Some kind of tough thermos bond. To me, the bigger point is we're seeing another example of the way that these classic human desires that go, you know, back thousands of years are being put in a centrifuge with technology. Thurston Veblen diagnosed conspicuous consumption because the industrial age enabled a new leisure class. And today, water bottles are in the news because new technologies have put artificial scarcity into hyperdrive and combined it with that conspicuous consumption. I love how technology breakthroughs put these literally ancient human desires in a blender. And then I use a built-in straw to sip them. Hey, what's up? That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. I really did get obsessed with these water bottles for a week, albeit in a different way than the people who are storming the aisles of Target. Uh, if you haven't been here before, this is a channel where I look at business history, technological history, history in general, and try to figure out what really happened, what the kind of misunderstood story is. 
Um, the ideas for the Stanley Water Bottle collabs that I made up uh, in this video, they come from people over on Patreon. Uh, I thought they were all actually pretty funny. And uh, also over on Patreon, I have a reaction video where you can see some commentary and more details about the research that I did for this video. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for joining me. And uh, I hope, you know, whatever, whatever you choose to sip from, that it may be sweet and cool to the touch upon your lips. Wow, I don't know where that came from, but video's over. So uh, I guess that's what we're sticking with. All right, bye.